I have an article called Race, Jazz Versus Racism. And I talk about how when I was in college, and I went to Hamilton College from 1981 to 1985. And I was born in 85, just so you know. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you for thank you for letting me know. That. I mean, you're not trying to imply anything about my age, are you? No, just just just, just making facts. some notes. It's just facts, right? <laughs> it's just facts, exactly. <laughs> and in 1977, I watched Roots. I talk about in this article how yeah. You know, it was really with Roots that so many folks, myself included, became aware by seeing that visual, those images and that storyline, the horrors of the slave trade, you know, losing your, 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 your traditional names, you know, being forced to adopt another name, being whipped and, and brutalized, you know, mm-hmm. uh, 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 if you run away, being caught and, and, and being enchained and sold and separated from your family, all of that stuff, that planted a seed, which in college, when I started going deeper into the history, started bubbling up as, a, as almost a hatred for people, as I would now say, who are racialized as white. But what prevented me from going down that rabbit hole of hate was the music was my love for jazz and immersing myself in jazz when I was in high school, where I didn't segregate who I listened to and liked based on race. Mm -hmm. Right. It was a sound. It was a style that I loved. So, yes, there are, I mean, Black Americans, Afro-Americans, Negro-Americans, colored Americans, whatever whatever you want to say, created the Mm -hmm. blues and created jazz. But as I love to say, when an art form is created, it becomes a gift to the world. So it's not right. that Black people, Black Americans own jazz. You've got to ask me permission before you can play it. That's ridiculous. People, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, people say that, though. Uh, yes. It's, you know, you're, it's, you're taking, it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's, Eminem doesn't count. Eminem is stealing, you know? Eminem uh. <laughs> is an American who fell in love with an art form created by Mm -hmm. black folk. And I like to say white folk and black folk because that's a Southern way of putting a human, like a more human face on it. And you say black folk, white folk. Right. He fell in love with that art form. He devoted himself to that art form as did people like Big Spiderbeck in jazz, Stan Mm -hmm. Getz, um, uh, Paul Desmond, uh, Phil Woods. These are people mm-hmm. who are racialized as white, whose music I fell in love with. You know, to bring it from a little further up to date, uh, the late, great Michael Brecker. Um, there's a guy still alive on the West Coast named P- Pete Chrislieb. I love their playing. And what mm-hmm. I did for this article, man, was I looked at, I said, let me do a little more research into their ancestry. And I found out that Phil Woods was a combination of like, and I think French, German, and Irish. And that one of them had Southern heritage and another one had a different mixture. And I and it gave me a richer understanding of who they were. Right. Other than saying white. So one of the things I say in the piece, I said, isn't it a shame that through the term white, that their background the differences in their background of their and the individuality of their background is erased. Like you take some white out and just white out that. Yeah. It's it's literally white, white. (laughs) literally (laughs) Literally whiting it out. Yeah. So that's Mm -hmm. why I say, I like the way you're saying that we have to look at where people come from, their regional identities Mm -hmm. and cultural or environmental influences too. Because as I said to Sheena, when I was on Sheena Mace's own podcast, I said, look, you know, people were racialized as black who are from the South originally, and those who are from the North, and those who are from the West Mm -hmm. Coast, and those from the Midwest, there are differences among them. They have a shared history in terms of this country, and there are some shared dynamics that you can call Black American culture, but check this out. 
And this is the beauty of culture over race. Black American culture is not just, when you look at its tributaries, Black. As Americans, yeah, for sure. Europe is a part of our heritage. So Black Americans have, in part, a European heritage, in part, an mm-hmm. African heritage, in part, a, a, you know, aspects from the Caribbean, and in jazz, an Afro-Cuban element. Um, the great mm-hmm. uh, pianist and composer Jelly Roll Morton, he called it the Spanish tinge. You know, that's <laughs> in the music. And it's in our culture. Yeah. So, you know, if we dig deeper than these ridiculous, immutable labels based on skin color, we find such mm-hmm. richness that we can focus on. But again, it's yeah. a diversity within the unity. The unity are American ideals founded and grounded in the nation's founding documents, what elephant right. call our sacred documents. So that ties into the concept of like uh, a secular religion in terms of America. And I'm not talking about jingoistic patriotism. I'm talking about an appreciation for the ideals of this nation that are found in the Declaration of Independence, in the Constitution, Mm -hmm. in the Bill of Rights, particularly the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. And I extend it to the Emancipation Proclamation, to Lincoln's mm-hmm. second inaugural address. I mean, they are, these are where in script, in writing, in narration, are ideals that become beacons for us to aspire to and to work towards. And yeah. this is something that, that Stanley Crouch, my, my late friend, was a part of this lineage that I say that Winton and I share, he would talk about how the amendment process, that the fact that we can bring amendments to bear has within it a way for us to address and redress past wrongs. So, right. so, so this is something that's inherent in our political philosophy. And so it's really important for us to recognize those ideals and recognize how we violate them, have violated them, and do violate them all the time. That doesn't mean we throw them away. That doesn't mean we say no. they're full yeah. of crap. No. <laughs> you still use right. it as inspiration and work yeah. towards it together with other people. <laughs> 